Drones saved Ukraine from defeat amid broken allies' promises. Drones have become a lifeline for the Ukrainian army, which is forced to fight against superior aggressor forces having an acute shortage of artillery ammunition and soldiers. This is stated in a reporting article by the New York Times. The publication's correspondent got acquainted with the work of the unmanned aircraft unit under the leadership of 33-year-old senior lieutenant Yuri Fedorenko, widely known under the call sign Achilles. For months, his drone teams, part of the 92nd Air Assault Brigade, filled gaps in Ukrainian defenses, holding off a Russian incursion targeting Chasov Yar. Teams are working day and night, attacking Russian armored vehicles, dropping explosives on Russian positions, and using their drones to ferry supplies to Ukrainian soldiers along the front line, writes the New York Times. According to Achilles, without drones, Ukraine would have already been defeated in the war and the Russians would have been in Kyiv. The military man proudly showed reporters his workshops where engineers modify and test drones. At the same time, he expressed anger and disappointment at the broken promises of Western allies and the losses he said Ukraine suffered as a result. We have an absolutely absurd situation. Imagine a boxing match where there are equal boxers, but one of them can hit once and his opponent can hit 10 times. This is an absolute theater of the absurd, says Achilles commenting on the months long stoppage of arms supplies from the USA. According to him, fighting on the Eastern Front has never been as brutal as it is now. Since the artillery shell shortage first began to be felt in September, the Ukrainian army has continually lost ground to a relentless and ever-increasing Russian attack. During the winter, the Ukrainians managed to prevent a major Russian breakthrough, but in late February, the Russians launched an all-out offensive on Chasov Yar, Achilles said. With the help of his reconnaissance drones, he saw Russian soldiers massing. I realized they were coming, he said, but without enough artillery shells, the Ukrainians could not hit Russians near supply lines, as they usually did to prevent an attack. According to Achilles, the Russians moved step by step, taking one position after another. This happened after we were low on ammunition and our artillery had nothing to fire, he continued. According to him, the cannons fired only two shells a day, when they should have fired at least 30. Putin prepares to imprison more Russian generals, military elite may revolt against the president. Mass layoffs continue in the Russian Ministry of Defense. The arrest of the head of the main directorate of the Russian Armed Forces, General Vadim Shamarin, was the fourth arrest of a high-ranking official from the Defense Department over the past month. The number of arrests among Russian generals will increase significantly in the near future. Russian human rights activist Vladimir Osechkin told Channel 24 about this, explaining why the so-called purge began in the first place. Recently, it was reported that the head of the Russian Armed Forces Directorate and Deputy Chief of the General Staff, Lieutenant General Vadim Shamarin, had been detained. In mid-May, head of the Personnel Department of the Russian Ministry of Defense, Yuri Kuznetsov, was detained and arrested in connection with a bribe case. And the purges in the Russian Ministry of Defense began with suspicion of Sergei Shoigu's deputy, Timur Ivanov. In April, rumors not only began to be spread within the security bloc through the Ministry of Defense, but the option of an armed rebellion was also being developed by a number of units of the regular army. This, of course, could not help but cause hysteria in the Kremlin. The FSO and FSB, loyal to him and Putin, developed a special operation which they call among themselves thieves in uniform, emphasized Vladimir Osechkin. The Russian generals are an absolutely corrupt community, which for more than 10 years has been earning huge amounts of money measured in billions. They profited from everything, both from the war and the exercises. At the same time, they built the foundations of this war so that with its help, they could remain in their positions for a certain number of years until the end. So because of the war, they wrote off a huge amount of money, increasing their budgets. What is happening now is a cleansing of the entire leadership of the Ministry of Defense and the systematic detention of those individuals who were dissatisfied with Putin's policies. Osechkin noted, the lava of arrested generals will be replenished. This is not surprising because now at the head of the enemy, Ministry of Defense, there is one of Vladimir Putin's main accountants whose function is not war, 
but militarization and exposure of the multi-million dollar hole in the economy that Shoigu and his henchmen created. Moreover, more and more people who did not resist Prigozhin's rebellion in 2023, as well as those who sympathized with the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin and co-founder of the Wagner, Dmitry Utkin, will end up in pre-trial detention centers. In particular, information may soon appear about the detention of the already half-forgotten Sergei Sorovikin, the ex-commander-in-chief of the Russian Aerospace Forces, who is directly associated with the beginning of Prigozhin's rebellion. But none of this would have happened if not for the powerful resistance to the Russian occupation on the part of the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian people. In some ways, the arrests of the generals of Shoigu's team are the result, in particular, of decisive steps by the Ukrainian army, Osechkin added. In this case, military elite may revolt against the president.